Hello everybody, welcome to Redesigning Desktop Icons, the show where we question our will to live over some Google monochrome looking 3D models. A few days ago I asked you which icons I should redesign and I got a couple ideas, some of which being Steam and Discord, which I definitely have as a, as a desktop application. In fact, if you'd like to join my Discord for help as you get started with Blender, the link is in the description. If you'd like to nab these for yourself, go ahead and check out my Instagram at Daniel K. Craft. I've got a Google Drive folder all set up for you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first logo we're going to be working with is Discord. I just dragged the image in here. You can reset it to 000 by typing Alt G. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in a cube, which I will then throw a subdivision surface modifier on. Now I'm going to start tracing this and it's going to be really boring, so I'll be back in a bit. So this is obviously sped up, but I'm just going to go over some of the techniques I was using. I use a subdivided cube and then just kind of extrude that all over the place until it's roughly the shape and I'm lining up the vertices with the edges so that when I crease the edges, it all just lines up. And I'm only doing the tops and the edges because when I do that, when I subdivide it, it's going to smooth out those corners even more. If I were to crease the inside edges, that would cause the subdivisions to be completely ineffective. Now about the eye holes, what I did is I just deleted some of the faces on top and on bottom, bridged them with edge loops, and then again crease around those edges so that it tightens them up. It's just about as accurate as an SVG except now it's got all quad topology and it's ready to bevel and all sorts of stuff. Now I can already hear people asking, why didn't you just import an SVG and convert that into a mesh? All right, well, here's the problem with that. Here's an SVG, all right? That's nasty, what am I supposed to do with that? This over here, this is why we trace it. Just look at the difference between these two. Nasty topology, beautiful topology. Can't do any kind of displacement or anything like that. Perfect for displacement and everything like that. Now the great thing about the mirror and subdivision setup is that you only have a few vertices that you're working with and you can change the resolution based on what you're doing. Here you can barely see a difference, but look around the eyes specifically, you can see that it's becoming much crisper the farther I increase. Here on the Daniel Craft channel, we are pioneering what it means to redesign desktop icons. Maybe it's the most meaningless thing you can do, but you know what? It's honest work. So now the question is, what do we do with this now that we've just created the Discord logo? And the answer is anything you want. Hey, Daniel from the future again here, just gonna explain what's happening right now. At this point, I had no idea what I wanted to do with it, so I just kind of cycled through a bunch of different styles. Here I went with like a text sort of look with a little back, with like a metal background of some sort. However, the problem with that is, and you're gonna wanna keep this in mind as well, if you go too detailed, especially with icons and things like that, it's just gonna lose all the detail and it's just gonna look like a mess. Now this, you can get away with it with certain types of materials like wood, but if you're doing like tech and things like that, the details are so important that it's really hard to pull that off on an icon and things like that. So eventually I went and moved on to like a non-photorealistic kind of candy wax looking uh, sub subsurface scattering sort of look. And honestly, this would have worked just fine, except I just, I wanted it to be a little bit more detailed than that because that would have fit what I've been doing this entire time. And then I tried making it glass and putting something glowing inside of it. And that always looks cool. And that's kind of how I segued into my final picks for this specific logo. Now the beauty of these things, of course, is the fact that you can customize it to your liking. You could change every single thing about this. You could make it have evil red eyes instead of nice blue eyes. I'm going for the afterglow controller type of vibe. Maybe I'll add more to this design, maybe not, but for now I think it works just fine as a desktop icon for Discord, which I definitely have on my desktop. Here you can see the icon in its natural habitat. Yes, I downloaded it just to display the icon here. I'd say it looks all right. It's definitely pretty different from the original. I think it's high time to move on to Steam. First thing is always gonna drag in that logo, press Alt G and Alt R to reset it. Now I'm gonna do something similar here with the tracing. This time I was modeling with cylinders and then I did some trickery with face manipulation and all that. Something that you're gonna to need to do if you want a Boolean cut like I'm about to do is make sure that the separate objects are in separate objects and then you use separate Boolean modifiers for each of them. That is a problem that I ran into in this process and it'll save you some time if you're planning on doing this on your own for some reason. All right, now's where the fun part starts. Now we're gonna add in another cylinder except this one is gonna to have to be 64 vertices instead of 32. 
We're going to rotate it again, scale it up so that it's the right size as the icon in the background. This time we're going to scale it in quite thin and then inside view, bring it to one side and then duplicate it and bring that to the other side. Now with this top one, you're gonna go and add a Boolean modifier, select the object we have here as the difference. And once you've got it all sorted out, you should have something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna go for a bit of a wood engraving look on this thing. The textures that I'm featuring in this video are from 3dtextures.me. That is probably one of my favorite texture resources right now. Now that we've got that first wood material out of the way, let's do another one. One good way to manipulate the colors of your materials is to add a brightness and contrast node. This proved to be really handy in this situation because I got two materials that I thought would be exactly the right colors. They weren't, so I just employed that one node and it turned out perfectly. And here it is, wood engraved steam logo. It's looking great. Now, you may be thinking like, can't you just do that in Photoshop? <sighs> well, yeah, but you can't get these nice shadows and this nice silhouette in Photoshop without a lot more work. So that's why I like to do these in 3D. Plus I think it's fun and it's a fun thing to practice. Now I'm gonna get this rendering, but real quick, we're gonna go over how you can make multi-resolution icons instead of just one icon resolution. So it turns out there's actually multiple ways to do it. You could do it straight from Photoshop with a plugin. You could use GIMP, I believe, without a plugin with layers. But the way that I'm gonna do it, since I'm not like taking it too seriously, is I'm going to use a website. I don't really feel like downloading more software to do it. So the way I'm gonna do it is do three different images, each of a different resolution, one at 256, one of 128, one at 64. I'm gonna use this icoconvert.com. I'll let you know if it works well. I'll toss in all three of those images there. It says it's converted, so I'm just gonna save the file. And there you have it, new Steam icon. And if we change the size of the icons from large to medium and all that, you can see that the icon actually changes resolution with it. Now this is much better because if you don't do that, like I wasn't doing earlier, it doesn't update the resolution and it will leave it with this weird box. So I think what I'm gonna do is go through and update my icons so that they're all multi-resolution because this is clearly much better. And there you have it everybody. Here's our two icons in large size. Now we go down to medium. And I'd say this was a pretty successful run. I'll be using both of these icons from now on and I'll go ahead and change my other icons to be multi-resolution as well. What's going on everybody? Real fast before this video ends, I want to announce something. The Discord recently hit a certain milestone and we're going to be running contests from now on from time to time. So if you feel like showing off your Blender skills and maybe earning some cash along the way, go ahead and join the Discord. It'll be a lot of fun. The rules and announcement is on there. I'm not going to waste your time with that. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Keep blending and take it easy, everybody. Bye.